Tell your friends! Tell your friends about Hooks and Ladders, but also about songstudio.ca. You can get all kinds of information about songwriting, tips and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, like, follow and subscribe. That's what we need, that's what you need. I would like to hear more about your history, and I would love to hear a song or two. Yeah, no um, problem. So, uh, I, I think from everything we spoke about, I mean, the, an obvious song that I, that I think is ha has a cerebral quality to it. So, I, do you know the song "A Criminal Mind"? Do you know that song? "A Criminal Mind" is all. I, 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 okay, he, so he's talking one, about it as if it's not his own song. Yeah. but you know that song. You ever heard that song? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. You, they yeah. might know it, and yeah. they might not. But. That song, for example, <clears throat> th the reason I felt it was really strong, right in, you know, right in my parents' basement, was that, so I'll give you a little history of how the song came together. Okay, so I so got this melody. Had that, and um, oh, please hold your applause to the end. And uh, and uh, I, I I I knew that melody. So there's the melody that I had. That melody is suggesting something. I love. I, I like the minor key because that's the so, of that's all a more keys. more cerebral key. That's right. <laughs> it is yeah. actually. Yeah. There, it's a more pensive thing anyway. Yeah. And the saddest key of all. That's and right. uh, <laughs> and. Um, I knew it was, okay, so I'm going to write, I'm going to come up with some lyrics with that, you know, somehow. What it's about, I have no idea. It's another just fragment in my not yet invented cell phone at that point. Um, so, oh, I guess there were, but there were those giant things that I couldn't afford. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. So, I, I was at the Canadian National Exhibition and, you know, I'd done the rides and I'd done the, the freak show, no, they didn't have that by that point. <laughs> that was gone, that was in the 60s. Um, so we're, we're in 1983 here, we're in 1983. Um, and just out of luck, I think it was in the automotive building, pretty sure it was, there was, a, a, you know, the Canadian government will have various uh, government displays, there was a guy there that had, they'd brought a cell from Kingston Penitentiary. And it took up about the corner of this room here from that pole, like that, that's, a, that's how big it was. There was a bed in there like that, a single type cot type bed. And um, there was an, a, an old guy, I say old guy, he was about my age, so he was really in the prime of in his In his prime, yeah. yes. He had just retired, so he's like, I'm 66, so he was probably 66, 65. And he goes, um, he, he uh, no one's paying attention to this thing at all. Like, no one's, it's, it's exhibition day. We're not looking at jail crap, <laughs> right? And, but they had the actual cell. I mean, the bars and everything. And, you know, you could see that paint was chipped and everything. And you, can, you could write a story just about that cell alone. And um, melodies, you know, it's in there, but it's, I'm not connecting the two yet. But I, you know, I was with my girlfriend and, and, and she had very, very little interest in it, but she was indulged me to kind of go, I just want to go check this out, right? So I go and talk to the guy. And as he's telling me about his life in, uh, in uh, uh, um, re reforming criminals uh, and, and how he related to them all through his life, he started talking about how criminals think, right? And a lot of what he was saying, I was thinking, yeah, I kind of think that way myself. <laughs> it's probably not a good thing. Uh, and I ended up <laughs> had a lot of those thoughts. And uh, he then said, you know, I said, but you know, the cell itself, you know, like, do guys go crazy in there? I mean, how, how, how do they live like that? And he said, I'll show you something. He opens the door, he says, get in. 
And you know, I, you know, I go in, I go kind of, I sat down on the bed only on the edge because they had a bed dummy in there, that, oh, an actual one that, a car, that some guy made, that made out of like scraps of newspaper and bits of like uh, thread and any crap you could find around the, the prison. He'd made this bed dummy, uh, wow. which you use for when you're, when you're, you're trying to escape. Trying to escape. Or escape. Escape, when you're trying and to anyway, escape. When you're trying to escape. And uh, so he, um, he, he closed the door. And I just remember that moment when he went clank. He went, feels different now, doesn't it? He goes, because you can't get out of there. And I thought, there's so much in this that it's kind of like, it's a little bit like songwriting in a way. You got to lock yourself away, but this is horrible. This is a this is a horrible experience, and I don't want it to end. And I can't. I don't know why those two things were competing in my mind. <clears throat> so I was with the guy about a half hour, and when I went home the, the next morning, early the next morning, I realized that that you know, I could just hear somebody pleading their case. You know, at the moment when they say. <clears throat> you know, the defendant's been found guilty, and, you know, do you have anything to say in your own defense? You know, that, that moment when you stand up, and remember that Murdoch guy recently? I don't know if you saw him and his thing. No, Your Honor, I don't have nothing to say. And um, I did not kill Maggie. I did not kill. I mean, I, I, I can relate to this all through my life because I've seen it happen, but, you know, we've seen all those things. But I suddenly had this, you see, my hands are steady. You've seen my face before. Soon you can take your last look and they'll close the door. Okay, simple rhyme, right? I stand accused before you, I have no tears to cry, and you will never break me till the day, big dramatic moment, I die. So then I finally came to that big moment of like, oh shit, how am I not gonna make this into a big cerebral thing about my 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 childhood and how I was mistreated, and, or or you know I was uh, I, I, as a child I was deprived of, of of this and that. I'm gonna get way esoteric deep into all of the psychological uh, nuances that have, that have affected his life. Instead, I get to this, you know, a criminal mind is all I all I've ever known. They tried to reform me. Should have warmed up my vocal cords first. <clears throat> no, they tried to reform me, but I'm made of cold stone. Okay. A criminal mind is all I, all I've ever had. Ask one who's known me if I'm really so bad. And this was the big moment of truth, was because I thought, you know, that's the end of the chorus. He doesn't say anything else. Ask one who's known me if I'm really so bad. Leave it. But then I thought, no. Like the guy told me, these guys are recidivists who they leave two years later, six months later, three years later, five years later, they're right back in jail again because they just have that in them. And... I thought, you know, I'm digging at it and digging at it and going, ask, you know, at that, ask one who's known me if I'm really so bad. And then the moment of light was like, I am. And I just gave a, a dramatic moment to take, take this little melody, which I'd always been playing like that, and now bash it out. Drive it home. Now we can start getting really honest. I've spent my life behind these steel, steel bars. Okay, that is a, a, a moment that I had to, took a lot of songs to get to that moment where I finally was felt the confident enough, or I don't even know if the confidence is the right thing, engaged enough to go, just tell the truth. Just make it a moment of truth because, uh, you know, it wasn't an expression back there, but, you know, a cliche now is, you know, just drop that truth bomb. <laughs> and that's what people relate to. And I think, and it kills me how, you know, a year later when the song was doing really well, you'd get you know, young 14-year-old, you know, 
teeny bopper girls would go, that's just like me. And you're, like, you're like, you're frightening. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, but people would ask, why do people relate to this so much? And I thought, oh, yeah, because everyone's got a good side and an evil side. And we, to whatever degree we say yes to it is the degree to which we either remain free or have your house be an exhibit down at the exhibition, <laughs> you know? Like, it's, it's, so I just told the truth. It's basically it. And I, I got lucky. Now, that's the other side of it I have to, I hate to tell you, but sometimes just dumb luck happens because you just kept scratching at it, scratching at it, and it's like, oh, the door wasn't locked anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> actually, look at this. If I just turned that knob. Wow. So anyway, so that's one example. Yes, Bob. Did, did you have a feeling there was there was a missing piece there? Yeah. With, 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 with so often with songs, so often with songs you do. Yeah. So often with songs you you feel there's a missing piece. That's there's a missing piece, and that's that's one of the most frustrating aspects of it. Is that God damn? It, how do I get? To, what, there's something missing, and I got to figure out what it is, and it's torture. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's torture to kind of get there. And the moment, the moment it does happen, if it happens, as you know, it's eureka. You know, it's like, yeah, oh yeah, that's it, that's it. And unfortunately, sometimes the reaction from people can be, eh, it's too cerebral. Just wanted to ask you, I, yeah. I'm not a religious person, but I find some of the lyrics in that song could be related to Christ. Oh. That's a good one. Uh, I don't think um, I've ever heard that, but I mean, I know the song's not about that. No. Nope. It could, like, I just hear that and go, wow, it could be about the crucifixion. Like, it's like getting ready for it. What, yeah. Was that your intention at, at any point ever? Not in that song, but no. My, uh, it, but, um, doesn't mean it's well, not there. That's the thing. It doesn't mean it's not there. You yeah. know something? It, the reason I'm being really. I'm going KG. to be careful with the answer. Cage with the answer is this. I did, someone said to me early on that often a misinterpretation of a song is better than what you were writing about. Right, right. <laughs> and I began, I hang on to that. I, even one time, I was, you'll go through phases where you don't like certain songs that you've written and you want people to look, put the spotlight on these ones now. And I made the, I made the gaffe of putting down something I'd done in the past that was not particularly successful, or it was actually one that had done quite well. And I could see, what are you breaking their hearts for? It's like, no, no, this is, a, this. They, if a person really likes this song, it, it locked into their life in some way. So I wouldn't discourage you from feeling that, the fact that you even felt that alone, I feel like, oh, this was worth coming today. It was worth playing that, because you, you, got, you got something in there that you, you, you see an angle there that, that could very well be. And, Funny enough, yeah, even the chorus of the song is a little bit hymn-like. So it could be that that's, that's inflecting that in you. And um, I'd say, yeah, keep going with it. And it's available on that. Uh, <laughs> For further study, you might want to own <laughs> yes. several copies of it in different formats. I think yeah. this week only, 99 cents, yes? <laughs> <laughs>